Well, I've always enjoyed working with my hands and this is something I made many years ago, around about 35 years ago, and I've just rediscovered it in a box of bits. Um, I made this completely by hand, no lathe, no milling machine, just had a post drill and no plans. Took the design from a photograph out of a uh, firearms book and made it up as I went along. I mean, got a, a little barrel locking latch there. We put the cartridge in. And then we're ready to shoot. And you can see it where it measures well just slightly less than three inches and made up of odd bits. It started life as a lump of brass off a slab like this. I drew the outline I wanted, cut it off with a hacksaw, filed it to shape. The barrel started life as a piece of key steel, cut the size and drilled it through. I drilled it halfway through from the one end and then halfway through from the other and then drilled the right way through and, and reamed it out. The grips are made of uh, electrical insulation, uh, Paxlin type material. And it's based on a copy really, it's a, a copy of the Colt number no. three and it's a cheaper version of the Colt number no. three really. The, when the Colt no, number no. three came out in around about 1870, um, there was a numerous rip-offs of that by other cheaper gun makers. Right, well, and this is one of the a copy of all the bits. The and I'll just show you basically how they all fit in. It's the little hammer, and you see in the body there we've got a leaf spring. I've just aerodized it in there. It's a a double leaf spring, put one in and it obviously wasn't uh, firm enough, powerful enough, so I put another one underneath it to support it. A little hammer, I just assemble this on the outside so you can see more or less what's going on. There's the hammer and the leaf spring goes under there to throw it forwards. Then we've got the trigger, trigger, very simple little trigger system that goes on there so there's a little spring and for springs I use a little tiny piece of silicon rubber to give it some spring for the trigger return spring so there's the hammer in the fire position and the trigger forwards when I pull the hammer back there you see the sear of the trigger catches the hammer, it's ready to shoot. Pull the trigger there and the sear, trigger's release and hammer jumps forwards. And the other little working part is this little piece here. And this is the locking mechanism for the barrel. So to release the barrel you push down on the little button here, hinges that back and the barrel then is free to pivot to the side to reload. Then slides back in, the little locking button comes up on the inside of the barrel and locks into the little register there. So that's all the moving parts are to it. The little grips there made of uh, Insulation, Paxilin insulation off some electrical bit of kit, just fold the size, little nut set in, and there's the screw that goes in the other side and goes right through them. So that's all the parts there are really. It's all very basic. There's the screw that goes in, pivots the barrel, and we can put that all together again and there we go.
Well, I'll give you some idea of what uh, what I copied them from. Here's a photograph of a case pair. So, so many of these are very, very similar. I've never seen two just the same. These are actually Colt number threes. And this is another Colt number three, uh, full size one. But you can see here the hammer is different and the barrel catch is different. Um, so you'll see that there's endless variations of these things. And this is my version. So if you found that interesting at all or it's spurred you on to want to try and make something with your hands yourself then great. Uh, if you'd like to leave a comment or a question I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please give us a rating, a thumbs up always helps and uh, there's no plans available so I can't give you any plans. It's a non-firing um, curio and uh, that's what it is. Thanks for watching, bye bye.